Hezekiah falls off the wagon and loses an arm. I am Milton, son of Carpenter Mary, dad of Carpenter, worked on skyscrapers. Mom, Mary Ann, I am the son of a Carpenter Mary. I get to make parables, and this is my Tommy Parable series about Tommy the no-arm Chinese fella. How do you lose both arms? Brown nosing. Being blindly obedient, they love that in the Orient. He was told, told by his boss, Wu, to stick his right arm into a wood chipper. He blindly obeyed. Slowly fed that right arm into the wood chipper. The left arm, lefty, saw what was going on, was of course surprised, and jumped off. That's a wise thing to do. If you're a left arm or anything that can resemble a left arm to someone else being the right arm, Remember, my parables are wrapped in symbolism. If you see something bad happen to someone similar to yourself, don't let it happen to you. Jump off. That's what Lefty did. He's got a nice hand modeling career going on. He goes to Vegas, pretty good at the one arm bandit. And he, uh, he's, uh, he has to go get a massage every once in a while because the body has the heart. But other than that, he's doing great. Now this parable is not set at work or at home. Uh, Tommy won his girlfriend's heart, Rhea, by doing a snake dance. He's always been scaly, he always talks with a lisp. Now that he's missing both arms, he, he likes to stick his tongue at a lot too. Now he's missing both arms, yes, he's Chinese. He uh, does a very mean snake dance and his girlfriend, Rhea, was wooed by that snake dance at the Snake Pit, popular dance club here in L.A. He also got promotion out of losing both arms. Don't count on that happening to you. His boss, Wu, saw that he was a good brown noser and made him management. His boss and a whole lot of folks around. This occurs at Tommy's AA meeting. Yes, Tommy has to go to AA. He, he's missing both arms. Yes, Amputees Anonymous, they hold their AA meeting at the bar, Alice Bar down the street from Tommy. And they support each other. They, they get up, they tell the stories about their lives, how they lost their whatever it is they lost. The problems they have because of losing, uh, you know, retooling to do something, that kind of stuff. They tell their stories, and uh, that's what Hezekiah is doing. Yes, he is on this. And he's missing one arm. And let me set this story, this parable, up a little bit. Lucille and uh, Henry are new to the bar they were walking down the sidewalk they lived somewhere in the neighborhood and they saw the AA meeting inside and there's the bar and they were curious they went in see how that worked and they sat down had a drink uh, ordered from Al there and uh, Hezekiah was there with all of his friends at the AA meeting, and he was telling his story. <clears throat> he explained he's Amish, and uh, he had been working hard all day, all morning, and uh, the plowing wasn't going good. He kept hitting roots and stones and bad parts of the soil and uh, it makes plowing rough especially when you don't have like a motorized tractor once again he's on it so he uh, he went home for lunch and do rest a little bit and that didn't help because his uh, wife was there a nagging a nagging a nagging why can't you help me out a little bit? Uh, that butter needs churning. Can you churn the butter for me? 
Oh, I gotta put that up. You know, um, Josiah is a, a farm is much bigger than this. Why can't you get more acreage? Nag, nag, nag. So he went out and he, uh, a little early, but he went behind the barn and had a drink or two. And then he was going out deciding whether he wanted to do some more plowing. And uh, that's when his friends came by in the wagon. Yeah, no, you know, no trucks, no, uh, none of that Amish country. His friends came by in the wagon and said, we're all going over to help uh, Josiah raise a barn. Would you like to come? And, you know, Amish, you know, um, they're very good people. He said, sure. And he jumped on the back of the wagon. And I don't know if you know this, but uh, in Amish country, the roads aren't that good. They don't pave them. They don't have the motorized equipment. don't believe in it to pave the, the roads very well, or at least not all of the roads. And he was going down one of those dirt roads and hit this big rut, knocked him off. Off the wagon, onto the dirt road. And there came that other wagon. And uh, he explained, it ran clear over my arm. Took it off. The next wagon coming past, rolled right over his left arm it can be his right arm sometimes depending on how you're looking at it so he fell off the wagon and he lost his arm and uh, Juanita Yes, he uh, had a breast augmentation accident. That's what uh, how she ended up with no arms, just like Tommy. She tells everybody when you go in, at least all the girls, when you go in, write down on your legs, on your arms, do not take these off, and write down on your boobs, make these bigger. She did get a very good uh, settlement out of that uh, because, the, you know, the doctor messed up, took off the arms instead of making the boobs bigger. And she used that settlement to get, yes, the biggest uh, boobs they have. And yeah, her friends have to look out for her because, uh, you know, she can be a little top heavy, and when she gets a drink or two in her, she doesn't have her hands, so you don't kind of catch herself. But she asks Hezekiah as he tells his story. Well, couldn't they reattach your arm at the hospital? And Hezekiah says, reattach? No hospital. I was like doing well to have the lady down the street sew me up so I'd stop bleeding. Remember, when you hear that siren, check and post a five. I've been asking for Flight 93 checks. 911, Flight 93 checks of America's lifelines. For over nine years, I've yet to get one. That's a lot of men in censorship conducted without fear of being covered the evening news. We the people must be the evening news. We must be the reporters. Hear that siren, fire engine, paramedic ambulance, police car? Make that video, whatever you get. When you don't get me, you got the timestamp on your phone, you got the number dialed. Whatever born thing you get, it's not going to be born if you need the fireman, the police, the paramedic. And it's going to be just as newsworthy, guys, as me asking for a 911 Flight 93 check of America's Lifelines for over uh, nine years and not getting one. He had 9-11 Flight 93, like the uh, heroes of Flight 93, fought back physically against their, their terrorists, but they also fought back making calls. 
called uh, 911 as I was uh, as I saw in like a news story or something from the plane all of our phones make videos nowadays we can make videos of our phones not working you got the timestamp on your phone you got the number dialed they call friends and family from uh, the plane as well if I remember correctly you got the timestamp on your phone you got the number dialed uh, last one I made I hope to make one soon maybe after the rest of uh, preparing my 4x6 prints for uh, this month and that's what all these are go to uh, dappadilly.blogspot.com and follow the links printed out on the other sites as well a lot of them now I distracted myself where was I I'm a handsome ball guy I get easily distracted make that video you got the timestamp on your phone you got the number dot whatever born thing you get it's not gonna be born and yes, it's not going to be newsworthy either until we make it news. The news media isn't doing their jobs. We've got to do it for them. And yeah, every time you uh, call up another customer, you get that boring thing. Phone ring, every minute, it's busy signal, it's money out of your pocket. So make that video, post that video. Come see me in person, have wit, wood, travel, show me the perfect place to build. Jesus is a Megalit house. That's that kind of religious censorship, keeping you from calling me up to tell me what you believe. Doesn't have to be something you hear in church. Or asking what I mean by Jesus is a Megalit house here on earth. That's religious censorship, the kind that can place someone named Hussein in the highest office in the world. Right after we got attacked by a whole lot of angry, violent, deadly Husseins. I'm not a fan of the Russian guy in there now, waving the Russian flag. Either. So, uh, yeah, truth is my favorite, not one or the other party. Should be all of our favorites. Uh, make the video of American Sidejack Lifelines, post it. Call me up in front of network news anchors, local news anchors, any and all in the public eye. Mayors, governors, senators are all supposed to do stuff about that. Oh, yeah, uh, if you can't reach voter registration links at vote-truth.blogspot.com. And you can't, you don't know how many other folks you can't reach to tell who they should vote for or what they should vote for. You get that boring thing. Yeah, they place. We need to change that. We need uh, good leaders. Those put in office by the people. Make that video, post that video, come see me in person. Let me get back to my story. One, make it quick. It's already 13 minutes. Hezekiah tells Juanita. I hope that's right. In case it's not the right name. It's your middle name. He tells her, no, there's no hospital in Amish country. Or... I don't know. Maybe there is. I'm not up on my Amish stuff. But he couldn't get the armory attached. Let's put it that way. And... Uh, That's when, you know, he's, he just poured out his heart and soul reliving that. And he says, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to get myself a drink. And he starts over to the bar and that's when, that's when um, Lucille and Henry get up to stop him and say no you can't you come this for think of all you lost uh, you because of your drinking and that's when Juanita pipes up she says leave him alone he wants to get a, a drink let him get a drink I think we can all use a drink at this point and you know that's when Al pipes up and he says oh okay he's feeling generous I'll get the whole bar at least all of the AA I'm meeting folks. I'll, I'll buy you a drink. It's all on the house. And that's when Lucille and Henry, they just, they've had it with the new bar. How can they do that? Have that AA meeting at the bar. They get up and they leave. I'm Melton, son of a car for me. Guy with the change in eyes. Yeah, medical research being passed by.
Yeah, here's the eyes uh, about uh, four or five years ago. Here, make it five. Slowly but surely starting to change. You can see the brown. Well, they've been changing since 96 or 1996. But the brown uh, circle is slowly disappearing. I'm going to show you in a bit. And the, uh, oh, remember to tell that joke you got perfectly want, once, only once. You have to tell it. Just get it on video. Same for uh, anything serious you have to say. Get it on video. The smaller browner circles, the bigger bluer circles are going in. The, the new eyes. The blue eye DNA eyes are uh, are bigger. I mean, they're literally bigger than the old ones. You can see that as they're growing in. And the smaller browner circles, you can see the circles. Uh, when I show you in there, hopefully, you won't be able to, you, you can see it, but uh, it depends on the day how good. But lately, always when I put the uh, flashlight on it, you can see it pretty good. That's from about 2009. That photo of the eyes with just a small bit of bluish stuff in there. Yeah, you think doctors of blind folks uh, would be uh, interested in something like that? Growing a new pair of eyes. Oh, I'm a genetic carpenter dad himself. Blue light dad taught me how to do this. And you see the, uh, the browner circles? You can't see them. I can't see them. Closer to the blue eyed uh, outer circles. And the white part around the brow. Sometimes that can look all whitish in there as the change uh, goes forward rather quickly. Yeah, I started taking those vitamins I've been taking when I got out of the hospital, Conway Hospital, Charity Hospital in rural Louisiana. Got out of there and it uh, they told me I had uh, low blood counts, dangerous low blood counts when I was in there and bad vitamins gave me big 12 shots, all that. And then yeah, if nothing else, a year later, my counts were abnormally high. Yes, it's some cartoon where they wanted to drain off a pint, but I, you know, I got a unit, uh, whatever they called it. I got out of there before uh, they brought out the leeches. Yeah, that's, uh, I hear that's why uh, Hezekiah didn't want to go to the hospital. All right. I took my vitamins back then and then I could I feel the difference and uh, it got to the point where I couldn't feel the difference. I didn't feel anything going on as I was taking the vitamins and so I stopped taking them. Started up a little bit under a year ago and yeah, it's had that effect. It, it catches the light now the eyes. Come see me to tell me what you think of about my changing eyes. And let's get started. A building, a better world. Tear down the great wall of evil that has just me and everything we will find at those sites. Like ChristComplex2.wixsite.com slash Davidilia. It's just me and all that imagery. That's a great wall of evil around me. Tear it down so we can get started on those thousand points of light. At least come tell me in person what that place needs to inspire the future and the present to greatness with. Besides truth. Oh, we all know Jesus is a medical house built on truth. Make that video truth. Come see me. And let's get started. Oh, you can tell me your Tommy uh, video. Yeah, do it in person.